And I want to share with you an insight that maybe as you're saying to Hillam, you could think about it and it may be helpful. So I started my life as a corporate lawyer, I worked at a corporate law firm. And in that world, there's a pretty strict hierarchy. So I was a junior associate and you spend lots of time assisting more senior people. So one case, it was a negotiation. There was a senior partner that needed the help. It was a small matter. And so they only gave him one junior associate and that was me. So we prepare for this kit, for this negotiation. We go to the room, it's this nice conference room in New York City. And this senior partner is the smooth as silk. I mean, the, you know, the guy was rocking, knew everything, contract backwards and forwards. And he was so, he's so charismatic, he, he owned the room. And we had this long negotiation. And there was a couple of open matters and the day was already getting late and he, you know, he saw people were getting tired. So he was listen, let, let's just pick it up in the morning. I said, no problem, everyone respected him. So we go back, we're talking on the way, on the walk back from you know their firm to our firm. We should do this, we should do that, this, that. There's like a couple points left to close the deal. But there were big points. So we go back, come to work the next morning, well in advance of when we have to go for the end of the negotiation, and I get a frantic call from his secretary to come see her. I run over and she says to me that he had some kind of, it wasn't a heart attack, but it was something. And he had to go to get it checked out immediately. And so he's not going to be here today. I said, okay, no problem. I said, let's, you want me to postpone it? She goes, no, he, you can't postpone it. He feels you'll lose more than you'll gain. He wants you to negotiate for him. I said, I'm sorry. Like, it sounded like you said he wanted me to negotiate for him. Like, he couldn't have said that. It's like, yeah. I'm like, wait, you understand. Like, I'm here two years. Like, you understand, like, you're cool? She's like, listen, here's what he told me to say. He wants you to go in and he, she gave me basic instructions, which was basically just say what we went through yesterday and just say, I said so. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that does not sound like a good idea, but Hashem runs the world. So I go to this negotiation. They're like, Hey, where's John? I'm like, well, he's got this thing. It's not a heart attack. And God, he's okay. But he had to get it checked out. Like, oh my God, is he okay? I'm like, sounds like he's fine. Like, hey, postpone. I'm like, no, he wants us to negotiate. They're like, with who? I'm like, with me. They're like, oh, okay. So I sit down and I just tried as hard as I could to put as much enthusiasm and effort into the points that we made. And at one point, the partner said, well, who says this? And I said, well, John said it. And the room went quiet. And they said, you know what? John said, it. he must be right. All right, let's just do that. And I'm like, for real? I'm like, yeah. We were done. We closed out the last points. And I remember walking back and I told the story to a colleague of mine. They said, you know, John's a pretty powerful partner. And his word goes a long way in the industry. You probably did as well as you thought you did, but really you were just the mouthpiece of a man much stronger than you. What is the power of Tehillim? I want you to understand that when we say Tehillim, we're not just saying Tehillim. You know, Rinachman says that, you know, David Melech wrote Tehillim with Ruch Kodesh, we know that. Rabbi Nachman says that when we recite Tehillim, it's as if David HaMelech himself is saying it with us, that the Ruach HaKodesh is still in the words. And when you recite the Tehillim, you are reciting it like as if David HaMelech is saying it. You're reciting it on his behalf. You're reci he's reciting it with you. Those aren't just your words. They're David HaMelech's words. And so when you stand before Hashem and you are putting your effort and your energy into words that you want to create protection and and light and and Yeshua's and the Hamas for Kal Yisrael, we're walking up to Hashem, you're walking up to the to, to the heavens and you're saying, I got the I got the most senior partner in the world behind me. I got the, the I got the Melech Mashiach. I got the Melech Sulchai Bakayim. The words that I have, they're his words. He's saying it with me. And so when you say it, realize that, Mashrecha, you are now a shaliach of David HaMelech. And with your energy and your enthusiasm and your kavana and his words, anything can happen.